Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm joined with brother Wa'il Ibrahim, who came salam. all the way from Hong Kong to Sydney, Australia. And wallah, we really appreciate your time and your effort that you're spending here. Many people may know Wa'il Ibrahim for his very, mashallah, informative and effective videos on how to overcome pornography addiction. But there's something about Brother Wa'il that not many know. Now, I've known Brother Wa'il for quite some time and I know that before you got into the dawah, before you got into the public speaking, before you got into the helping the youth overcome pornography addiction, you used to be in the music industry. Yeah. Now, I really want to know what was it like? Uh, I was a musician, singer, uh, music composer. I, I actually, I had no passion whatsoever in my entire life other than making music, singing, uh, earning money through this uh, industry. My ambition was to compete with big, you know, names, like big stars. So that was my ambition. I wanted to be one of the top singers. Alhamdulillah, Allah says no. I don't says know no. anything about Arabic musicians. But Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, you don't know, Alhamdulillah. So while I was in the music industry, I decided to leave the country after I met my Filipino wife. And uh, she was a Catholic, a very devoted Catholic girl. Now, moving to Hong Kong, I had no uh, idea what I'm going to do and uh, what, what kind of work I'm, uh, I'm going to you know, uh, do in, in Hong Kong City. I don't know anything except music. So I started to form a band in Hong Kong City. Again in Hong Kong. In Kong. the <laughs> back to um. Then we hit the market singing, dancing and so on and so forth. And I used to earn a lot of money أخي, every night. So what? Yeah. What made you just give it up? Was it just a random thing? There, there are a few, few incident, uh, incidents that took place. Number one, again, as I told you, when I was in Hong Kong, okay, after earning money and so on and so forth, I wanted to be famous. I wanted to be on the top. So I asked who's the most popular singers here and he show me who's that uh, popular singer so I can compete with him. So he told me it's a person by the name of Leslie Chung. All right, so I start studying. Uh, his music and so on and so forth. I want to uh, reach his production company to give them some ideas so that we can work together and compete with him. In the middle of all this planning, mm. Leslie Chang committed suicide. Whoa. He killed and himself. And this is the person you're trying to be like. Yeah, he's famous, he's wealthy. Every, actually, he was known to be, the they used to call him the Asian biggest superstar. Uh, people would flew from all over. Suicide after yes. having money, cars. Yes, everything. and he was so young, so handsome. Everything Akhi I wanted to have, he have had, yet he gave it up all and threw himself off one of the hotels, very popular hotels. Threw in, himself off of a hotel? Yes, the hotel room, the, the top, you know, very high floor and he was uh, dead instantly. Now this, this incident shook me a bit and I was asking myself like why in the world someone like him in his position would kill himself? I wanted to be like him. But you do know that He's not the first musician. Yeah, I came to know later because yeah. I was blinded Akhi, at that time. I was blinded, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah, opened up my, my mind and heart at that particular uh, incident. But whom do you know that... Uh, there are many, many celebrities. I'm sure a quick Google search okay. will give you tons of celebrities who had the fame. It's, although it's very sad, it's a lesson for us Muslims to, to really, reflect. really, really say Alhamdulillah for what we have. Alhamdulillah. The, like the, the happiness we have, the content that we have. No. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, so at that time, Akhi, when I, when I heard about Leslie's uh, death, I was left at shock and I started to reflect and think, why would, he, why would someone like him do that? And I started to have uh, nightmares and uh, I would wake up in the middle of the night scared because I would jump off the bed, my heart beat would be pumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was, but I was really in a very, very difficult uh, state for a few months after this incident. One day I remember, because at that time, Akhi, my wife, as I mentioned, she was very, very devoted Catholic uh, from the Philippines. So she would never miss any uh, mass of Sunday. Of, that is that is like, you know, so she invited me to come with her. Now, I love her. And because I love her, I had to go with her. I used to line up during the, you know, the Holy Communion thing they call, and the priest who gave me that biscuit, where, where, where there is a, a cross engraved on that piece of bread, and he would say in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and I would take it, but deep in my heart, I felt that there's something wrong with this. I didn't know what to do. So, 
the famous superstar commits suicide. No. You follow your wife's footsteps to the church. No. When did you give it all up? I said I wanted to pray. One night I woke up and I said, I, I, you know, I, I'm fed up with going to the church. I'm fed up with, with the, this, you know, bothering thoughts that comes after the incident. So I, I said I wanted to pray. So I woke up in the middle of the night one, one night, I performed my wudu and I started to pray. No qibla direction, nothing. nothing. Just, just I wanted... Allah, I just want really, Allah. Really, yeah, I don't know what it was. These two rak'ah or three rak'ah, I, I don't even remember. And Allah, I prayed and I cried to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I made dua, ya Allah, yani, uh, relieve my heart from that pain and that confusion. I, I really, I, I cried to Allah so much. After I said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah in this particular prayer, I got scared, you know why? Because my wife was at the back. She was actually watching me all the time. You know what my wife told me that night? She said, I wanted to try the prostration, but I don't want to become a Muslim. I just want to try the Muslims at prayer. Right. And then we ended up praying together next to each other. And I gave her a printed form of the Salah. And when she hit the ground with her forehead and nose, I heard her crying. Wallahi, I heard her crying. She was crying. And then she said what? God is worthy of being praised and worshiped like this. No, this is no, the way we should worship. No, no. She didn't know and I didn't know at that time that even Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Bible, prostrated to God Almighty. She didn't know and I didn't know at that time that even Abraham, Moses, Joshua, all these... That's, all, that's how they all pray. Yes. One day we were watching, uh, we were listening to a tape about the purpose of our existence. And the Sheikh was shouting in the crowd like, Are you so arrogant to acknowledge that there is only one God? Are you so arrogant or are you ignorant? Because if you're arrogant, then Allah will deal with you on the Day of Judgment. But if you are ignorant, then here you are. Now we are telling you to accept one God. And uh, uh, during this uh, lecture, 40 people I heard have accepted Islam. And we heard them reciting the Shahada with the Shaykh. My wife was one of them. SubhanAllah. She was uh, uh, in her room and I was at a far distance. And I saw her moving her lips with the Shahada. Yeah. So I went up to her and told her, isn't it time yani, to acknowledge God? Come on. We've been yani, in this for two years and you saw many books around the, the, the tapes of Sheikh Ahmed Didat and all. Uh, she said, I already did. I said, yeah, yeah. I said what, what, what? Repeat again. Yeah. And then she took the shahada in front of me that day. And wallahi, since then, my wife became so thirsty to learn about Islam and so thirsty to share the knowledge that, he, that she uh, learned about Islam. But guess what was the next surprise? What? Five months later, we are in the Kaaba. We are at Hajj, yeah. and that changed everything. What a, what a story. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khairan for being with us. What an absolute, like, amazing story. Like, how many of us are being held back from the shaitan? How many, how many out there right now right. that are still listening to their Nicki Minaj's, listening yeah. to their Drake's, listening to this, listening to that, when at the same time, they don't know where they could be. Right. If right. they just leave this rubbish, leave all of this it will and lead them to the path of purity so much better in this right. life jazakallah khairan salamu alaykum jazakallah khairan for having me shukran